Hello students, welcome back. This question is from gate 2004 exam. It's for two marks. Let us first read the question. A 4-bit carry lookahead adder which adds two 4-bit numbers is designed using AND, OR, NOT, NAND, NOR gates only. Assuming that all the inputs are available in both complemented and uncomplemented forms and the delay of each gate is one time unit, what is the overall propagation delay of the adder? Assume that the carry network has been implemented using two level AND OR logic. Okay, so they are talking about a carry look ahead adder. First of all, what is a carry look ahead adder? See, when you need to add to n bit numbers, you can use a normal adder or a carry look ahead adder. What happens in a normal adder? We add these numbers stage by stage. That means first of all, we'll calculate the sum of these three bits C0, A0 and B0. This is carry n and the zeroth bits of both the numbers. Okay, you'll get the sum S0 and a carry for next stage. Now we are ready to calculate the sum for stage one. Okay, because we have this carry. Okay, now these three numbers will be added. You'll get the sum S1 and the carry for next stage. Then you are going to go on to the next stage, next stage, so on till the last stage. Okay. That means the total time depends upon number of stages. If you have 100 bit numbers, there will be 100 stages and there is going to be a lot of delay. Now what happens in a carry look ahead adder? We make the total time taken for this addition independent of number of stages. Okay. See. There are two steps in a carry look ahead adder. First step is it generates all the CIs. Second step is it calculates the sums. That means in first step, you'll get to know all the carries in a constant time. Okay. Without even adding these two numbers, you'll get to know what is the carry on first stage. Okay. Similarly, without performing any addition, you'll get to know what is the carry for last stage as well as what is the final carry. Okay. I hope you know about it. Okay. Even if you don't know how all this happens, you can watch my theory lectures. Anyways, these are the formulas for carries. Okay. C1, C2, C3, C4. These are the formulas. In first step, we generate all the carries. Now, once we have these carries, it's just performing normal addition of three numbers using a full adder. Okay. So all of these additions can take place in parallel. This step will also take constant amount of time. For that matter, the calculation of these carries also happen in parallel because C3 does not need C2 or C1. Okay. See, you can have a look at these formulas here. C1, C2, C3, C4 does not depend upon the carry from previous stage. They only include C0, C0, C0 and C0. That's it. Okay. Now have a look. The formulas for carry generate and carry propagate are written here. To calculate all of these carries, you need carry generate. See, this is G, G, G and G. Also, you need carry propagates. That is P, P2, P3, P1, P2, P3 and so on. That means to implement a carry look ahead adder. On first stage, you will find all GIs and all PIs. Okay. Carry generates and carry propagates. Because if you don't know GIs and PIs, you cannot calculate the carries. Okay. Carries for every stage. Now, how much time or how much delay will calculating this take? Let us see. See, GI of any two bits is just their end. That means GI can be calculated using one level only, just one AND gate. <clears throat> it's given that delay of one gate or one level is one time unit. So it will take one time unit only. Okay. Let us see how much delay will calculating carry propagate bit take. PI is performing XOR of AI and BI. It could have taken only one time unit, but they are saying we cannot use a XOR gate. Okay. You know, XOR can be implemented using AND and OR gates. 
This is how you can implement XOR using AND gate and OR gate. See, this one can be implemented using a two level AND OR logic. Let me show you how. Like this. This one is A complement B and this is B complement A. Okay. Now, this PI can be calculated using two level logic. Okay. Both of these gates work in parallel. So one, uh, one time unit delay, then one time unit delay for this OR gate. This takes two unit delay, this takes one unit delay. Both of these are happening in parallel. That means first step is going to take a delay of two units only. Okay, this is happening in parallel. Now you can see, once we have these values of GIs and PIs, we can substitute the values in these equations Rather, we can just form the circuit. First step of circuit will have, uh, will just calculate the values of GIs and PIs. Then we'll just perform these ORs and ANDs. Okay. It's given that this one can be done in two level logic. Okay. You can see this last line says, assume that carry network has been implemented using two level AND OR logic. That is given in question. That means we will need two more levels. Okay. So after this, you need two levels for calculating CIs. Okay. By doing all this stuff, stuff that means two levels here and two levels here. We have just found the carry ins. That means actually the first step has been completed. Now we can calculate the sum. Okay. Calculating sum means performing XOR of PI and the carries that we calculated. See, if you want this sum S2, you will perform XOR of PI, that is P2, and this carry. Okay. P2, XOR, C2. That is just one gate, but we cannot use a XOR gate. So it has to be implemented using two levels. I've already proved it here. Okay. That means this step will again need two more levels. Two level logic. Okay. So your answer is six. See, first step is uh, requiring two levels of gates. Then this step is also requiring two levels of gates. This step is also requiring two levels of gates. We have used two levels of gates three times. That is three twos are six. A total six level of gates are required. That means at each stage, the delay is one time unit. Total delay will be six time unit. And none of these steps can happen in parallel because this one is dependent on this one. This one is dependent on this one. So this is step one, this is step two, and this is step three. Okay, so your answer is six. Okay, so just to summarize it, in first two levels, we calculated the values of GIs and PIs in parallel. Now we have all the GIs and PIs. Okay, so we have these values. We just need to evaluate C1, C2, C3, C4 from these values. That means now we can just perform these ORs of ANDs. Okay, so like we implemented AND or logic for this expression. Similarly, for all of these four expressions, we can implement a two level AND or logic. Those two levels will come after these two levels. That means uh, by now we have used four levels. Okay, see this level is dependent on this one. Calculating CI needs the values of GIs and PIs. Okay, now we have all these carry ins and all of these bits that is a1 a2 a3 and b1 b2 b3 we need to add them so this can be done by performing xor of pi and ci okay that means we need this value ci and we need this value pi to perform xor of both of them so the last stage which will be implemented in two levels is dependent on this stage as well as this stage that means a total of six levels are used